Thanks for joining me while we take this Trampa 75300 VESC TP Power Motor and Speedmaster P2 Vortec SI knockoff for a spin. All right, let me just start off by saying one thing. Normally I'm against knockoffs and things of that nature. Uh, and that's basically what this supercharger is. However, since Vortec was less than helpful, shall we say, in this case, they kind of made their own bed. So, you know, it is what it is. So towards that end, let's take this thing for a spin. First thing I want to do, you may notice just off to the side here is, uh, what I shall dub the Snorkus. This is, uh, I believe this is a 2.75 inch to a three inch elbow. It's the one I had kicking around. I wasn't gonna buy one for this test. And I took a piece of uh, high density polyethylene plastic. It's an inch thick. It's actually a cutting board, chucked it up in the lathe and made a five eighths inch hole in that thing. So this is our initial restriction to represent a relatively small engine that we're gonna start with. And the reason why is you've seen other people online on YouTube in particular who've made, you know, contraptions out of turbos or whatever, but it's kind of meaningless because they don't have any compressor maps. There's no data attached to it. You know, we've already dyno tested these things and, you know, taken them to a drag strip. Well, huh, private airstrip because of COVID, uh, you know, and, and tested these things empirically. So why this? Because if you go to our Electrified Boost forum, it's electrifiedboost.com, by the way, check it out. If you go to our forum, I made a post there saying that this is the unit I would likely start with. The price is right. We know what the compressor map should at least approximately be. And it has a toothed drive pulley, specifically an 18 tooth 5T trapezoidal tooth profile pulley on the actual input shaft. Well, there is no input shaft. It's actually the impeller shaft. And that to me seemed to be the simplest way in the world to do this. If you recall back on my other, uh, the Vortec that I modified, that took all kinds of machining and it was relatively complex. And you know, it was not easy to make. This, this was easy to make. And I apologize for this thing being kind of squarish and ugly simply because I don't know where I'm gonna put a shield yet, whatever. I didn't want to, you know, cut off any corners just at this point. So you can also see that there is some yellow paper here that's actually uh, that's functioning as shim stock so that the pulley stays relatively aligned and it does actually stay relatively aligned. The other thing that, that I noticed is some people when they do their tests, they just run it wide open. The, the compressor that is. There, there's no restriction on the outlet. And that's a bad idea because what it does is it basically sends the compressor straight into the choke region of the map, even though you're off the map, it goes right into choke and it puts a relatively heavy load on it. And towards that end, here's how I can prove it to you. So this is connected with a 4S battery. We're just gonna get it started up. And by the way, if you watched my first VESC uh, video, uh, I had some issues with it starting. It started pretty harshly. I figured out how to correct that. I had actually set the motor current to a relatively low value instead of the 170 amps that VESC tool calculated. And that turned out to be a mistake. So now the startup is much better. Instead of kicking in at like 80, 85% throttle, it now kicks in at about 30% throttle and it's much smoother. So hopefully this doesn't blow out my mic, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it at relatively low speed and you can watch what happens when I cover the discharge with my hand. I'm not dumb enough to do this under significant power. You know, this is just to prove a point. It's sort of the same idea, like if you're running your vacuum cleaner or your shop vac and you stick your hand over the nozzle, it speeds up. It actually gets less load on it. Same thing happens here. And because we have the VESC tool running in real time, you will actually see the ERPM shoot up. In fact, let me switch over to that page in real time. And, uh, because again, this is low power. We don't really care about the power draw. Let me put on my uh, safety glasses here and let's uh, start her up. All right, so our ERPM is stabilized. Well, it's actually still climbing. Let's back it off. All right. Yeah, more or less, you'll get the idea. So watch what happens when I cover up the discharge. Shoots way up, like way, way up. So, that is why 
this is not a good idea <laughs> because it's going basically into choke even when it's well off the, the compressor map. So let me apply the Snorkus and uh, we'll do our testing there. I also have a boost gauge here and another camera shooting the boost gauge. So we'll be able to reference that and see what kind of boost we make. And if we can get this motor up to about 50,000 RPM, uh, 50,000 ERPM rather, then what's gonna happen is uh, we're gonna actually start entering the compressor map. Oh, one more thing before we do that. The pulley on the motor is 22 teeth. 22 teeth to 18 teeth, that gives us about a 1.22 step up ratio. So that should be another advantage that this has over the Vortec because uh, you know this thing goes into uh, saturation and it may not be in the meat of its torque curve, so to speak. So that's, that's another reason. I mean, it's all experimentation. We'll figure it out the hard way. Hopefully it holds together and if things work out okay, we're gonna try to kick it up to 8S. Let me set that up and I'll be right back. Okay, I moved the camera so you guys have a better view and I'm kind of out of the line of fire. As you can tell, I'm in my sunroom and there's a furniture pad that this thing's on. There's weights here so things don't get blown up and sucked into it, that'd be bad. And, you know, I'm in here because, well, honestly, it's cold outside, it's late, and I make poor choices. You'll also notice the VESC is sitting in this rather heavy piece of aluminum C-channel, which has a sort of a side benefit of functioning as a heat sink, but I don't expect this thing to run long enough to get warm. Uh, but it's sort of my equivalent of a big Clive explosion containment pie dish. So I had just adjusted the absolute maximum current limit to 300 amps on the VESC. Uh, you know, motor current max is set to 170. 0.31 and motor current max brake is 170.31 but we've got the camera running on the uh, uh, boost gauge and let's take a look let's let's click this thing over real time is active so let's go to real time data and right now I believe RPM is set I'm more concerned about seeing the current. Now I have logged this by the way to the hard drive but I haven't had too much luck I found it tends to freeze up and then I have to restart everything. And for purposes of this video, we can see the ERPM down here anyway, and that'll give us an idea of where we end up on the compressor map. So how ERPM translates to actual impeller RPM, in this case, it's a six pole motor. So you divide ERPM by three, that gives you motor RPM, and then multiply that by 1.22, which is our pulley step up ratio, and that gives us impeller RPM. I can't see the boost pressure gauge uh, so I'm going to put that up as, as text and obviously zoom into it so you'll be able to see what the boost is. But let's just take this setup now for a spin and see where we end up with current. By the way, the battery current limit right now is set to 60 amps. So let's see uh, what happens if we crank this thing up. By the way, another thing I want to say is if the, the hole in the Snorkus, which is currently five eighths of an inch in diameter proves to be too small, what's gonna happen is the compressor is gonna end up in surge. And that's something that we will definitely hear. I hope the vest holds up. Um, you know, the belt drive, that's the big test. Is that gonna hold up? I have a feeling it may need a tensioner on the slack side ultimately, and I'm not really sure how I'm gonna squeeze that in there if that becomes the case. But that said, 4S, uh, motor current max is like 170, whatever it was, and battery current is 60 amps. Let's see what we get. Hopefully it holds together. All right, so I don't know what the boost gauge read, but we saw an ERPM of 30,000. So that's ballpark, what, maybe about 12,000 impeller RPM. That's pretty good. Let's check the belt tension. Let's make sure that's still there. By the way, I do have the fire extinguisher right next to me. I have safety goggles, and which I need to put on, actually. And uh, my cell phone here, just in case bad things happen. All right, so the first change I want to make, I want to keep this at 4S. I want to go to, I wanted to make sure I was recording. I want to keep this at 4S. I want to go to the motor settings. 
specifically under general, the current tab. And let's raise the battery current max to 80. Let's see if that makes a difference. All right, so we've made the change. Let's write it to the motor configuration. Okay, let's go back to the real-time data. So before we were right at 30,000 RPM, we've added 20 amps. Let's see what happens. All right, the current in and the current motor are staying pretty low, which means it's not going into surge yet, but it doesn't need all that power. Huh. You know what that means, ladies and gents. Let's go to 8S. I'm going to set that up, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I'm a bit nervous about this. So I've made the necessary changes. I believe I have set the battery current max to 120 amps. Motor current max is still limited to 170 amps. We're just going to keep it there just to be safe. Again, I don't know if that bell drive is going to hold up, but we've got to, in order to get onto that compressor map, we've got to hit 50,000 ERPM. Don't know what the PSI is. It's making me nervous. All right, let's go back to our real-time data and say a quick prayer. And fire extinguisher's handy. That belt could go flying. No idea. Let's sneak up on it a bit. Well, we got to uh, the compressor map. I think this thing ultimately, if it holds up, should be good. I'm checking the tension on the belt. Still good. Belt's a bit warm now. Motor's cool. Vesk is cool. Batteries are cool. All right, no idea what PSI that hit, but you guys know. So hopefully that put us on the compressor map. Honestly, we only need like two PSI to get to the compressor map, so that's not that big a deal. So let's, uh, you know, I barely touched it and barely held it. I'm gonna try to hold it for just a little bit longer. It's a little scary doing this inside, I'm not gonna lie. But at least it didn't appear to go into surge. Let's try it one more time. That was like 57,000 ERPM. So I'm gonna do some calculations, go to the desk. It held up. That's a good start. That's a great start. I'm very surprised about this belt thing. You know, to get to where we really wanted to be to match the performance of the Vortec, we only need to hit about, what would it be? We need to be roughly 30, 32,000 impeller RPM. So. I'm gonna to try to do the backwards math in my head real quick. It's a little bit complicated. So to hit, let's say uh, 28,000, let's call it 30,000 RPM because the math is easy. That'd be 90,000 ERPM, but we need a little bit less than that. So we need to be maybe about 80,000 RPM or ERPM in order to do that. And actually we're kind of close. We're almost at 60,000 on only 8S. In fact, let's hit it one more time just so I can see where the current actually stabilizes at. Well, she appears to be holding up, and it looks like, uh, let me stop the real time. So it looks like we hit at the motor, the motor current was just over 100 amps. It kind of tapers off as battery voltage drops. These are not the greatest cells in the world, I'm finding out. Uh, the battery current was actually kind of low. Um, it peaked at just over 100 amps, but I don't think there's anything to be gained by changing our current settings on battery side because it's only 120 amps. So I think that's as much as we're going to get 
In fact, let's go back to real-time data real quick. Let's take a look at... Oh, I can't see it. I'm going to have to go back at the recording and take a look at where our voltage dropped down to. But basically, it works. Let me go analyze the data, and uh, I'll join you at the other computer. It didn't explode! I know I said let's go to the desk, but I went to the desk and I started looking at the data and I wasn't really sure what I was seeing, so I wanted to come back here and do another test before I tore all this down. And by the way, that's also when I discovered that OBS, which is a software I use to do the screen recording, had a bit of a seizure. So we unfortunately lost that footage, but I did think to at least capture a screenshot before I hit this real-time data. Anyway, what I did, because what bothered me was the fluttering of the boost gauge right so without going into too much detail i've been dealing with forced induction since the early 90s and i've done a whole bunch of tests including you know how much is a boost leak worth and i actually put a one inch hole in a discharge pipe but that's a different story speaking of one inch holes <laughs> that could go a bunch of ways but speaking of one inch holes in regards to the snorkus that could also probably go a bunch of different ways but you have to be more creative with that one anyway I drilled out the hole from 5 eighths of an inch to 1 inch. I just wanted to do a comparison test and see what happens. And then we'll analyze the data. All right, let's spin the beastie up one more time. Let's keep an eye on everything. Hopefully OBS is playing nicely now. Otherwise, I'm just going to try to, you know, tell you what I'm seeing on the screen anyway. Okay, so we saw an ERPM. Let's stop this real time. We saw ERPM of about 53,000 that time. Uh, and I'm going to get screen grabs of this, like I said, just in case uh, OBS is not playing nice. We saw a lot more current as well. We saw battery current was you know, hovering around 120-ish. Uh, motor current was around 150, which remember, we set it at 170, so there's more to be had there. And once again, it held up and didn't explode. So I think that's enough for testing purposes. Let's uh, now go to the desk. This time I mean it. And by the way, subscribe if you haven't. That would be really awesome, because we're gonna have a lot more fun. So I took a day to think things through because they weren't making sense to me. I mean, why are we seeing almost the exact same boost pressure uh, with the hole in the snork as being five eighths of an inch versus one inch? Why didn't the ERPM change? Well, I realized one thing. There's one thing I'm forgetting about. This is electrically driven. So that motor that I'm using, that TP power motor, has a KV rating of 750. So in other words, it makes 750 RPM per volt input. That's unloaded, of course, loaded, that goes down a bit. But what was going on, as you could tell, was by making the hole in the Snorkus larger, I was loading the compressor and therefore the motor harder, which is what you saw at the very beginning of the video where I kind of covered up the discharge. So that kind of explained that. But why not changing RPMs? Well, that's, that's kind of also explained by the KV issue. So we're basically voltage limited. You know, those packs were dropping down to about 28-ish volts or so under load. And the reason why the current went up with the, the bigger hole in the Snorkus was once again, there was more load on the compressor and therefore the motor. But the, the peak RPM didn't really change much. So that explains everything. So looking at this compressor map, we're kind of bouncing around the bottom of it, around this 1.2 line, basically. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that we're playing around the 500 to 550 horsepower mark. Uh, but that presumes that you're starting with a 450 horsepower engine. You know, the engine in, in the LTD is about 500 horsepower. It's a little bit more. Most people are starting with a little bit less. Uh, and obviously that, that those boost numbers are kind of pathetic. Let's not kid ourselves here. So towards that end, the other thing I would encourage you to keep in mind is that we were only running around 3,400 watts, about 3.4 kilowatts. 
That motor hits saturation just under 14 kilowatts. So we're only a quarter of the way there. But remember, uh, compressor power is, uh, is it exponential or logarithmic? I can never remember which curve goes how, but um, I think it's uh, exponential, actually. So to go twice as fast is going to take four times the power. So we have an idea of where we're going to be. We should be, you know, bouncing around six PSI-ish or so on whatever size engine that one inch hole in the Snorkus is equivalent to. Uh, I think for the next test, now that we've proved that the belt holds at least at, at these loads, which admittedly is kind of minor, but RPM wise, we're kind of close. Uh, I think, I think we need to stop messing around with these little batteries. Maybe it's time we, uh, dragged out the LTO beasties and had those things power up this, this deal. And, uh, let's try going for, I don't know, like a fifties high 50 something volt test with this P2 supercharger, because I've got things coming along that, that are going to be kind of game changers here. And I want to, uh, sort of finish up the initial development of this much more affordable setup before I turn my attentions to that, to the, the next big thing. So towards that end, uh, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. If you enjoy the video, uh, you know, hit me up on Patreon. That's always appreciated because this stuff's costing me a small fortune, uh, but I am having fun doing it and I hope you're having fun uh, following along too. And I'll catch you all in the next one.